many of you have heard of the phrase, food is medicine? That's almost all of you. And how many of you actually understand it? Because I know in this room there are physicians who actually understand medicine, but I don't see too many physicians who understand food. What I'm going to try to do is to bring you up to speed on how the two worlds of, of nutrition and medicine are starting to collide and give you a glimpse of the future of what food as medicine will really be like. Before I do that, though, I want to actually just um, bring us all back to the old man himself, Hippocrates, who uh, lived in a time when people didn't eat. They ate fresh foods. There were no processed foods that we, or ultra-processed foods, uh, so to speak. And he's the one that actually coined the, the term, uh, let food be thy medicine. But back then, it was really serious because they were, um, they were actually... Uh, uh, mendicating to themselves going forward and not actually trying to treat disease that had already left the barn. So, where do we take, uh, you know, 2,000 years of wisdom and move it into the future? Before we go to the future, let's look at the present day, right? So, uh, everybody knows that this is the unfortunate scenario, uh, as was described expertly by my colleagues, uh, Dari Matsafarian, who's the dean of the Tufts Nutrition School, and, uh, and Dan Glickman, who's a former Secretary of Agriculture. And the idea really is that our food is really compromising our health care system. In the United States, about a half a million deaths. Uh, worldwide, about 11 million uh, uh, deaths a year attributed to poor diet. And this is actually the study that they cited from JAMA showing that the state of the U.S., uh, of health in the U.S., over the course of 25 years, if you take a look at all those um, disease entities that are in small type on the right-hand side, and look at the number one risk uh, for mortality, it's dietary risk, accounting for uh, neoplasms, cancer, cardiovascular disease, and diabetes, right? So these are the chronic diseases that actually ail our system, our healthcare system, that we're trying to figure out a way, as we've been talking about over the last few years, how to do early detection, how to do monitoring, how to actually do the appropriate types of feedback. So let's dive a little bit further into dietary risk to understand what that is, because most of us think of dietary risks as foods that we should cut out of our lives, right? Human nature abhors deprivation, so we don't really want to cut things out of our life. In fact, if I were to tell you something to remove from your life, you might actually at some point, after I told you that, think about adding it, uh, sneaking it in, just so that you can actually uh, try that. Now, what are the things that we know about dietary risk? We know that we're not eating enough nuts and seeds, fruits and vegetables, uh, low in omega-3 fatty acids, and we're eating too many processed foods like red meat and processed meats and, of course, uh, sugar-sweetened beverages. But that doesn't 